Some games get tons of attention and praise, and some have the most extreme loyal fan bases, and some are just underrated. This is where this game falls. This is 13 for the PC. Hello guys, I'm Time Paradox, and welcome to this episode of In the Midnight Hour. Last episode I discussed my top 5 underrated bands. This episode I'd like to discuss a personal favorite and underrated game of mine. So here is my review of 13 for the PC. Roll the footage. So let's start off with the story. The main protagonist, Steve Rollin, wakes up with a gunshot wound in Brighton Beach, New York. He is suffering from amnesia and cannot remember anything, except that he has a weird tattoo of 13 in Roman numerals on his chest. He gets picked up by a local lifeguard and then suddenly, he has a flashback of him being shot on a boat and jumping into the ocean below. Sir, can you hear me? I'll take you to the first aid station. Try to walk. As he regains Careful. consciousness from his flashback, Damn he then it. passes out again. He awakens in a confused Still state, no unaware of his surroundings at a local health pocket. station nearby. The lifeguard Winslow hands Bank? him a mysterious key for a safety deposit box for Winslow Bank in Upper okay. New York. In an instant, gunshots come flying out of nowhere and the lifeguard gets murdered with him left to fend for himself as multiple enemies from all directions come bearing machine guns. Tom. Yeah? Not a, good time. a henchman the says, the tell the mongoose we spotted the target, and from there you fight your way until you finally find a vehicle. When you locate a vehicle, you head to Winslow Bank, and immediately look into your safety deposit box. Mr. Roland? It's been such a long time. Just as you open the box, you see a, some paperwork in a small bomb made out of TNT, the and then you have here. another flashback. Carrington was right. They took the bait. That's the mother load right there. The 20 would kill to get their hands on those files. We'll incriminate all of them from number 20 to number 1. Just as you come back to your senses, the TNT blows up, and suddenly Mongoose's henchmen start storming the building. You escape Mongoose's grasp once again and start to navigate your way out of the building. Are you dead? I said number 13 is still alive! Inform the Mongoose! Get him over here! As you finally escape, you end up running into the FBI agents and Colonel Steve Amos. Rowland, he announces you that you are under arrest for the murder of William Sheridan. As he takes you to the secret FBI office in Brooklyn and shows you some of the evidence. Emory, the snapshots, please. Look at this photograph. See the impact on the back of the head? Where did the bullet come from, in your opinion? That building there, see? Right in the line of sight. And who have we here? Well, need I get a mirror, or are you finally going to confess to the assassination of... I'm not going to show any more footage because it will spoil the story. But I will say it's a great and interesting story with some very shocking twists and turns. And I will also say this, the story starts out with a casual amnesia plotline and turns into something much bigger. 
and this game's ending will make you extremely angry that there was not an actual sequel from Ubisoft. Now then, the gameplay is a combination of a few stealth parts and a standard FPS. There are some interesting touches all that. There are a few levels where you're not be allowed to kill certain enemies, like in one of the first levels, you won't be allowed to kill FBI agents or employees of Winslow Bank. You'll have to knock them out with various chairs or bottles or etc. Or punch them out. This is one way it sticks out from the run of the mill shooter. Stealth wise is pretty standard, just sneaking around and rewatching your tail. The game's AI is almost always spot on, and the weapons you'll use here are pretty standard as well. A crossbow, silent pistol, throwing knives. But I should mention one interesting point. Throwing knives is something this game did before Call of Duty popularized it. Also, one other small point. Instead of regenerating health, this game has health packs and armor. It's really refreshing from today's standard, and adds a little bit of difficulty at times. I should also mention some other professional reviewers have mentioned problems with the accuracy in AI, but I've not noticed many of these problems. But there's one particular review I'd like to point out by Jeff Gerstan, back when he worked for GameSpot in 2003. Criticized the accuracy, AI, and a few other small issues. While I do not completely agree with him, he was just giving his honest opinion. He then criticized Kane and Lynch Dead Men, a game with some other similar issues with the accuracy in AI and some other major issues, especially with the cover mechanics. And what happened? He gets fired, and conveniently, Right before the game was released, there was a major ad campaign on GameSpot. And also not to mention the fact that many years later, GameSpot finally admitted to firing Jeff for obvious reasons. So that essentially proves that this whole professional reviewing industry like GameSpot, IGN, Kotaku, and what name you, is pretty much corrupt with ad revenue 99% of the time. There's very few people who had the guts and the balls to give their honest opinion. That's the reason people like Razor Fist and or, I mean, better known as the Rageaholic, are so popular. They have the guts to give their honest opinion and have the guts to face the heat from it. They don't really care what other people think. But anyway. Fine. Leave me to die. The level design is not the game's strong suit. The levels are not very well detailed, and the majority of the indoor and outdoor areas are just generic and linear. However, there are a few small points that the game will allow for multiple entrances, but it still does not make up the linearity of the rest. They need more of an open-ended design. Guess looking at it by comparison, it's not the worst thing to happen from the linearity standpoint. But anyway. Next, the graphics and presentation. This is where this game really shines with style and charisma. It takes a cel-shaded art style to make it sort of like a comic book style. They had some brilliant touches. For example, the, say you're sneaking around and the enemies do not know you're right on top of them. The, you'll see their footsteps making the sound tap, tap, tap on the floor. Or say, for example, if you're using the crossbow and you hit an enemy directly in the head, it will show a window showing the impact. But sad to say, there are some problems with this art style at certain times, especially with the character models. On a few rare occasions, they can look very ugly. Although the majority of the time, the character models are excellently designed and really look great. They're very detailed. Also, there are some issues with the voiceovers. They're not completely in sync with the characters' mouths at all times. It is pretty petty in my book, though, considering who they had to do some of the vocals. This is some of the best vocals I've ever heard in any game, period. They had Adam West as General Carrington, Rapper Eve as Major Jones, and David Duchovny as Steve Rowland. They give some of the best performances, except at times, Dev can just sound too plain. This can't be good. There is also one other voice actor who is very unknown who gives a great performance, Ken Starvick. He's featured in the dual role as the voice of Colonel Amos and the Mongoose. Number 13 will soon no longer be a problem. Now the multiplayer. The multiplayer technically does not work through Ubisoft, but you can download a program called IDP Join. You can download that inside XIII.net, which is a small community of fans of the game 13 who have started their own server. Sad to say there's still quite a few people who want to play this game online, but since Ubisoft shut down their servers, majority of people have given up and just played offline or don't play it at all. They do not realize there is an alternative. 
Now the multiplayer modes are just the usual, capture the flag, team deathmatch, deathmatch, and so on. There's only one mode that's different from the status quo, called the hunt, where you have two to six players and essentially you chase and try to kill a weird Grim Reaper type figure that cannot touch you. As the game progresses on, the more times a Grim Reaper gets shot, the smaller he gets, but that's all you can really say about the multiplayer. Anyhow, this is not my personal footage. It's from YouTube channel Gamer Forever Live 3D. Uh, some of these names are just plain irritating. But anyway, I'll leave a link below. Anyhow, the multiplayer is very functional and extremely fun. Maybe even if just four or five players a day could log on. There's still a few people on there, like Orzelk, 333, and Arthur, and a few others. I mean, this community could still be very active, but maybe it's just a dream. Maybe it's dead forever. So in conclusion, 13 had almost all the potential to be a commercial success, but it failed. Why though? Was there not a decent ad campaign? Was it the cell shaded art style? We may never know. These secrets may haunt us for the rest of our gaming days. So as always folks, thank you all and have a wonderful evening.